Hello there, my name is Charles Nsuazfani Msipa. Welcome to another presentation on uh, elements of matrix analysis. At this stage, we've um, gone through calculating eigenvalues and determining uh, eigenvectors. In this short presentation, I would like to give a, a summary of what we've done and uh, conclude by looking at the properties of uh, eigenvalues. So let's do this one. Where we started, we pointed out that if we put a, a matrix as a transformation, let's say from uh, the vector space R to to vectors in R2. We say the given vector is a given vector x in R2 is an eigen vector if it um, if it if when this vector is transformed by the matrix A in this way, AX. So in this case, we're applying the matrix A as a transformation to the vector X. And that results in a lambda multiple of the vector itself. So then in this case, we call lambda E again value and uh, x will be called an again vector. So I think it's clear that if in case I've got a matrix like A equals to 2, 1, 1, 2. And uh, let's say I'll give it a given vector x, which is um, let's say six, one. Now, if one ask, is this vector an eigen vector corresponding to matrix A? Let's say this vector x will ask if the eigen vector corresponding to matrix A. That would mean that we need to do such a calculation and then see if we can identify a value lambda which comes as a, a multiplying the vector given. Let's say we get 2, 1, 1, 2, we then multiply six, post multiply by six one as a column matrix, and multiplying here we know that's going to give us two times six plus one times one. On this side it's going to be one times six plus two times one. Now simplifying we get here 12 plus 1, which will give us 13, and here 6 plus 2, which will give us 8. Now, if we conclude that this vector is um, an eigenvector, we need to identify a scalar by which we multiply the 6, 1 to get to. 13, 8. But here we can see that if we put 6, 1, comparing the two vectors, we cannot identify a scalar with, with which we can multiply this vector to get that, or a scalar which can multiply this vector to get that one. So therefore, we can conclude here that uh, therefore, 
six one is uh, not in is not in even vector corresponding corresponding to the matrix matrix A. So that's what we, we, we did there. So again, as part of the summary, you should remember that this expression leads us to an equation um, of this nature. In other words, this expression expresses that the matrix of this nature transforms the vector x to zero. And then we remember that we say that these vectors, uh, the vector x as an eigenvector corresponding to matrix A will be non-trivial vector if the determinant of uh, A my lambda identity is equals to zero. In other words, we mean that this um, the system equation which is uh, generated by this type of equation is non-trivial solution if the determinant if this determinant equals to zero. That's the theory we get from the theory of uh, linear equations. So this is the characteristic equation which comes in terms of lambda and this degree is equal to the order of the matrix and then by solving it we get let's say this is an order n we then get lambdas one lambda two up to lambda n different again values or at least n again values maybe some of them repeated now from this then we after finding the, uh, the again values we also use the same expression to try to determine the again vectors now having this now we can sort of briefly look at the properties of um, again uh, values so let's say properties of again values let's say we are given matrix A of uh, this a matrix of order n in this case if we matrix a is of order n, we take it or assume that we look at it, we can look at it as a transformation of vectors from R n to R n. In this case, n can be 2, 3, and so on. Now, let's say we've got. Um, Again, values, let's say again, values of um, A. I write it just to you know the set of again values of A, of A, 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 A. Let's say this is a set of N values lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda N. Now, what is uh, this um, value which you can determine, we can define for this matrix is called the trace of A, written this way, trace of A. If we're given matrix, let's say A equals to A11. A12 up to A1n, A21, A22 up to 
to a to n let's say this is an n by n matrix there may be a n1 a n2 up to a n n we've got a square matrix like that we can define we a, a trace of matrix is defined by adding the entries along the principal diagonal in this case you can write that in short as summation from i equals to 1 up to n as it is running along the principal diagonal will be adding a i i that's called the trace of a matrix but now we're studying again the uh, values this can actually be shown that this is the same as the sum of the n again values corresponding to the matrix in this case this would be sum of lambda i's i from 1 to n so in, a, in our the trace of matrix which is usually put by adding the principal electrons of the principal diagonal can be obtained by simply adding the again values and also what we've looked at before the determinant of matrix a we know how to calculate the term of a but in this case once once we've got again values it can also be shown that the term determinant of a, a matrix the self order n is actually the product of all the again values of uh, the matrix in this case we write here pi remembering that pi is the grid p so here pi stands for product so it will be product of the n factors which are the again values corresponding to the matrix a so these are these are properties of of, of our again value now if the matrix a is an inverse then we know that the eigenvalues, the set of eigenvalues of the inverse of A is actually the values 1 over lambda 1, 1 over lambda 2. up to 1 over lambda n so in other words the eigenvalues of the inverse are actually the eigenvalues of a inverted then next we know that uh, if if we put a we can obtain another matrix called a transpose by changing every row to a column. Now it's equal to two, three, a two by two matrix, four, five. As a matrix, the transpose of this, let's say this is matrix C. The transpose of C, in this case, will be changing every row to a column. Now is this row is going to be the first the column and the two, three, and then the second row, the second column starting from four, four, five. Now in terms of eigenvalues, we if A 
if a t is transpose that we claim that again values of a are exactly the again values of a t remember i said at the beginning here how, how to not the set of again values by e of a so in this case this set is the same set for the egg for the matrix given and is transpose next if we are let's say we multiply matrix k sorry matrix a by a scalar k then what happens is that the eigenvalues of the new matrix multiplied by k is actually the k multiples of the eigenvalues of a. I also put k here, then the 1, k, then the 2, up to k. Lambda n. Also, if we do following kind of transformation a, say a plus or minus k, the identity, then the eigenvalues of this matrix, they say eigenvalues of a plus plus or minus k identity is equal to lambda 1 plus or minus k lambda 2 plus or minus k up to lambda n plus or minus k. Now, the last property we are going to look at is, cons is when you consider k to be positive integer, the positive integer k is an integer and then we need to understand that the notation a to the power k means multiplying the matrix a by itself any time k times So now, the resulting matrix A to the power K is the following eigenvalues. So let's say eigenvalues of A to the power K. Now, we know the, the eigenvalues of A are lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n. Now, the eigenvalues of A to the power K will be K powers of the eigenvalues of A. Now, it's K lambda 1 to the power k, lambda 2 to the power k, up to lambda n to the power k. So now, I think this is, you can check your, in your textbook and look for, study these properties. But otherwise, this is a summary of uh, what we've looked at. Now, in the next presentation, we will like to see what kind of what kind of things we can do with the eigen values and the eigen vectors. For now, thank you for listening.